Good morning. Welcome into the Cam Rogers Show on this Monday, August 13th, 2018. I am Cam Rogers. Welcome into the program and a lot to get through throughout the hour. I'm a little dejected this morning after Tiger Woods came oh so close to capturing that elusive 15th major and he did not. Brooks Kepka was dominant yesterday in many regards. He is totally built for major. So please cheer me up in the comments section. I do need it here today, but let's start things off. With the latest NFL rumors, a lot to break down, and we start things off with Kirk Cousins, the $84 million man, was quite impressive in that preseason opener against the Denver Broncos. He lit it up in his only series, going 4 for 4, 42 yards, capped off by a touchdown pass to wide receiver Stephon Diggs of the University of Maryland, which is very much in the negative headlines as we stand. Now, albeit the Broncos did not have Von Miller on the football field for that game, and we know how big of a game wrecker he can be, especially in terms of the monetary amounts that he's getting as a defender out there. Now, on the flip side, the Vikings didn't have three offensive starters on that front line, that offensive line there, so... I guess you could say that could be negated, right? The whole Von Miller absence by the injuries there on that offensive line. But considering Kirk Cousins as getting paid $84 million in guaranteed money over the course of the next three years, you get the sense that Vikings fans and Vikings leadership and the Vikings coaching staff, to be honest with you, have very thin patience with Kirk Cousins. If he struggles early, then you have to wonder if there's going to be more and more pressure on Kirk to perform. When you're getting paid that much, you better deliver right off the bat. Now, as we stand, he has delivered so far. Pretty good stat line to start off the preseason, so he's going to have to continue that momentum as we continue throughout the preseason and into the regular season. I think Kirk Cousins, if he has a healthy offensive line in front of him, will be very successful this year with Dalvin Cook and Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen and hopefully Laqu Laquan Treadwell can pan out a little bit at wide receiver as well. All right, let's talk about a former member of the Minnesota Vikings, Jerick McKinnon. So he suffered a calf strain a couple of days ago, underwent MRI yesterday after suffering that knee injury at first because he was grabbing his right knee during practice on Saturday, then hobbled off the football field. Turns out not nearly as serious as first thought. It was actually a non-contact injury on Saturday when McKinnon went down, grabbed his knee, and then hobbled on off. Now this comes as Matt Breida left Thursday's preseason opener with a separated shoulder. He should be ready for week one against the Minnesota Vikings, by the way. So it's the Jarek McKinnon revenge game in week one. So Breida should be fine, and he should be the RB number two for the 49ers this year. McKinnon obviously is the top line guy at that position. Sure sounds like he will be okay going forward as well. He actually practiced yesterday and actually hobbled off the football field again, got looked at by some trainers. So hopefully the Vikings, or excuse me, the 49ers play this very carefully in terms of Jarek McKinnon's health because he was pretty darn expensive when they signed him to that contract. So I would assume Kyle Shanahan is going to be very careful going forward the rest of the preseason. He might be used very sparingly and maybe not at all throughout the preseason here. All right, so that's the latest there with Jarek McKinnon. A lot of injuries to the 49ers so far. George Kittle got dinged up as well. He should be okay. But uh, certainly monitor that because we're talking about a team that is getting a lot of hype for the preseason and the regular season and the Super Bowl as well. So we'll see what happens going forward with those injuries there with the 49ers. Is there a quarterback controversy brewing in New York with the New York Jets? Sam Darnold looked nothing like a rookie in his preseason debut against the Atlanta Falcons. If you didn't have a chance to check out that game over the weekend, Sam Darnold finished 13 of 18 passing for 96 yards and a touchdown. Appeared really poised in the pocket, quickly worked through his reads, made decisive throws, and easily picked apart a Falcons defense that should not be a pushover in the regular season. Now, all of this comes after he missed the first few days of training camp due to a little mini holdout as he and the Jets' leadership are trying to get some sort of contract situation sorted out. 
Now, Schefter of ESPN recently reported that Darnold has, quote, a very fair shot at winning the starting quarterback job for the New York Jets in week one against the Detroit Lions on Monday Night Football. You're going to get a lot of pressure from internal and external about potentially starting Sam Darnold in week one. I don't think it makes all that much sense. He's a very raw project. So in that regard, you got to be careful with what you do with Sam Darnold. Because as a member of the Jets in Sam Darnold, why would you put him into the fray in week one against a good Detroit Lions defense when you look at a situation here and um, you're essentially just rushing him into the fray? And so for Sam Darnold, very much up in the air in terms of he's going to be the week one starter. Also want to correct things on that weigh-in we had up earlier. Total brain fart. Who should be the week one starter for the Jets? Obviously not Baker Mayfield. He's a member of the Cleveland Browns. Sam Darnold or Josh McCown. So be sure to weigh in there. My apologies on that one. Uh, so yeah, played well against the Atlanta Falcons. We'll see what happens. But uh, I'll say it right here. Unless he absolutely lights it up the rest of the preseason, don't play him week, in week one. Doesn't make any sense. All right, let's continue along here and talk about Mr. Darius Geis. Rough injury. Tories ACL against the New England Patriots last Thursday. Now, after the game, Geis downplayed it. Said he felt good, and I guess that's kind of the deal with ACL sometimes. If you tear your ACL, you can actually still function a little bit. Tiger Woods won a U.S. Open with a torn ACL. Now, prior to leaving, Geis had six carries for 19 yards, and he was supposed to be the top running back for the Washington Redskins this year. Now, Washington will have to rely on a committee of Rob Kelly, Chris Thompson, Samaj P. Ryan to fill that void. It's tough to see these injuries, especially to rookies, when you're trying to cement yourself as a legit NFL player, and this happens. It just sets you back. And now Geis essentially has to redshirt and be back in his sophomore campaign and have no NFL experience, or at least very minimal, if you want to put it that way, because we're talking about six carries in the preseason here. So tough, tough situation there for the Washington Redskins. But Jay Gruden was recently asked if Washington will look to signing a veteran running back, and Jay Gruden recently said no. He said, quote, with Rob Kelly and Samaj P. Ryan and what Byron Marshall did the other night, the flashes he showed, and obviously Chris Thompson, Capri Bibbs had a couple big hits. I think we're pretty good at the running back spot, so we'll show you what Jay Gruden said as well. Now, there were some rumors out there that the Redskins were going to look at maybe Adrian Peterson or maybe Jamal Charles. Uh, no, let's not do that. I mean, Washington already had a lot of depth at the running back position prior to the Geis injury. And then when Geis went down, I mean, you see it on your page here. P. Ryan, Kelly, Thompson, these are quality running backs. These are guys that can do just fine at that position. P. Ryan can be the early down back. Rob Kelly can be the goal line back. And Chris Thompson could be that third down back for the Washington Redskins. So, ton of depth up running back. And you also have good talent around the backfield as well. Paul Richardson, I think, is an electric player if he is used correctly. Jordan Reed is good if he's healthy. Jamison Crowder as well. And, of course, Josh Dotson, the young wide receiver, who came into his own last season for Washington. I don't think Jay Gruden's going to rush to sign Adrian Peterson or Jamal Charles anytime soon. I think it would just complicate things, to be honest with you. Now, also, Alfred Morris is still available as well. I don't think that uh, he's going to make any sort of comeback to the Redskins, but who knows? Jay Gruden recently saying that that ain't going to happen. All right, you're watching the Cam Rogers Show presented by Autolist. Are you looking for a used or new car and you're tired of browsing a million sites? Go to Autolist.com to browse the largest source of inventory on the web or download their top-rated mobile app for iPhone or Android today. All right, 
Let's talk about the national anthem, the ongoing debate there. Kenny Stills recently ripping the NFL on Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed. So he said the NFL should acknowledge it's blackballing Cap and Reed for their starting the kneeling during the national anthem. Now, Kaepernick has remained a free agent since opting out of his contract with the Niners back in March of 2017. Reed became a free agent following the 2017 season after five years with the 49ers. Both have filed grievance cases against the National Football League, which likely doesn't help their chances of being employed, unless the NFL owners just get sick and tired of fighting and just sign them anyway. And Kenny Stills has been at the forefront of this national anthem debate for many months now. He plans on kneeling during the anthem during the regular season as well. He kneeled during the anthem last Thursday night for the Miami Dolphins preseason opener. He was actually one of only a few players that actually did so, so keep that in mind. And amid stills calling out the NFL, of course, the commander-in-chief, President Donald J. Trump, took to Twitter on Friday morning to rip NFL players, saying that they should be suspended. Here's the president. The NFL players are at it again, taking a knee when they should be standing proudly for the national anthem. Numerous players from different teams wanted to show their outrage at something that most of them are unable to define. They make a fortune doing what they love, and he goes on to say, be happy and be cool. Interesting. A football game. That fans are paying so much money to watch and enjoy is no place to protest. Most of that money goes to the players anyway. Find another way to protest. Stand proudly for your national anthem or be suspended without pay. It sure sounds like the president is the commissioner of the NFL, doesn't it? Like he's threatening the players a suspension if they kneel during the national anthem. Uh, I understand the president is probably the most powerful man in the world, but he can't control the NFL. Should the president be tweeting about the NFL? Let me know in comments what you think about this national anthem debate. Kenny Stills has been at the forefront of this dialogue and he plans on kneeling during the anthem during the regular season. I think he is not alone in that. Malcolm Jenkins raised a fist in his preseason opener for the Philadelphia Eagles. We saw some players from the Jacksonville Jaguars that actually stayed in the tunnel during the national anthem. So we're getting a variety of ways in which the players want to create a dialogue about the racial injustice, the social injustice that's going on in the United States right now. So getting some comments on YouTube Live and Facebook Live about this, be sure to let me know what you guys think about the national anthem debate. Want to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, after the show, I go back and respond to comments as well. We got Brian chiming in via Facebook. The president is saying what the majority of Americans feel. That's interesting. Now, you actually are correct if you look at some of the data out there of surveys. Most people in the United States want the players to stand for the national anthem. It's kind of a smaller margin than what you might think. It's around 60% that people feel players should stand. It's around 40-ish that people feel players can do with what they please. So Brian chiming in there. Appreciate that comment. Keep hitting me up about what you think about this national anthem debate. Kenny Stills now and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, well, they're not making the South Florida Police Departments all that happy. How about this story? A day after two Dolphins players kneeled during the national anthem of the preseason opener to protest social injustice, police officers in South Florida have been encouraged by their unions to not buy Miami Dolphins tickets. So the Broward County Police Benevolent Association released a statement saying in part the following. We entered into this partnership with the understanding that the Dolphins organization would require their players to stand during the national anthem. The statement goes on here. This did not happen at last night's preseason game against Tampa Bay. Now, like I said, Kenny Stills has no plans to stop his kneeling during the national anthem, saying he will continue into the regular season, and it would, quote, take a lot for him to actually stop the kneeling. 
So one point of contention for many people out there is people see this national anthem debate as a respect type of situation. And particularly respect for the military. So is kneeling during the national anthem disrespectful to the U.S. military? Let me know. Type away. Type Y for yes. Type N for no. The people who say Y are of the camp that, yes, you should stand for your flag because that flag stands for the people that are fighting for this country abroad. People who type no probably feel like, well, that's not why they are kneeling. They mean no disrespect. Aaron Rodgers, for example, recently said that the message is getting buried and turning into this narrative that it's disrespectful to the U.S. military. It's not about that, according to that camp, right? It's more about, well, bringing to the forefront this situation of racial injustice, social injustice. So type away, folks, seeing some N's, seeing some Y's. It's like a 50-50% as we stand. I think that kind of is a nice sample for the United States because I kind of talked about it. It's like 60-40 right now, standing and kneeling in terms of what people feel about this debate. I'll say this. I think it's getting to a point of pettiness on both sides. And it's just like, why do we care? Because I am of the camp, of the thinking that if I want to stand during the national anthem, then I'll stand. And I don't care what anybody else does. Like, why does that affect me? It doesn't affect me. And we'll continue to scroll along with these comments here, so keep weighing in. But it's one of those deals where it's just like, well, why do you have to get worked up about it? Like, so for the people who think it's disrespectful, isn't you standing for the national anthem good enough for yourself, your conscience? You know you are, in your own mind, showing respect for the United States, for the United States military, and everybody who has fought and is fighting and will fight for the U.S. Isn't that all you need? Why do you need the other players to stand? I don't understand. Like, me personally, I would stand during the national anthem because, well, that's just what I'm used to doing. It's just kind of part of the gig, right? And for players and people who want to protest during the national anthem, I say go for it. Like, it has no effect on me personally. So why do I care? I don't. And I think people out there get a little too worked up about this because I don't know why. I mean, I just think people get angry about it just to get angry about it and just to say something. People are continuing to commenting here on the uh, Cam Rogers show about it. It is dis disrespectful to the military, but it is also making a stand on what people believe in, and that is our right. So that's Kevin chiming in via Facebook. And Kevin, I mean, you're right. I mean, like, I mean, if you feel it's disrespectful, then just stand. I mean, you can't, <clears throat> you can't force somebody else to do something that falls in line with what you want. It's just never going to happen. You know, I mean, it's, you're just wasting your time. You're wasting your anger. You're wasting your effort by saying, stand, 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 when you know we all have our free will and we're going to do whatever we want, at least in this regard. Obviously, I mean, there's certain limitations to free will, of course. But, uh, and there's also the argument that, yeah, you're an employer of the NFL and you should follow what your employer says. And I've said this before. It's not quite like that when we're talking about the National Football League. When these players have a special way to create a dialogue, they, ha they are public figures. They are not, you know, somebody in a cubicle somewhere in some random state in the United States kneeling during the National Anthem. They're not some average Joe, right? It's an NFL player we're talking about that can create change if they want. So that's kind of where I stand. And I usually don't talk about my personal perspective on this. But it's just like, why get worked up about it? Why? It doesn't make any sense. Now, one more note here. Mar Marshawn Lynch actually sat during the National Anthem for the Raiders preseason opener. That's something that he did during the regular season last year. So just to break it all down, we have Kenny Stills and Albert Wilson kneeling during the National Anthem. Robert Quinn raised his fist during the National Anthem. Malcolm Jenkins, Devontae Bosby raised their fists for their game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, members of the Philadelphia Eagles, of course. In Jacksonville, Telvin Smith, Jalen Ramsey, Leonard Fournette, and TJ Yeldon 
all waited in the Jaguars tunnel before facing the New Orleans Saints. And then in Seattle, the Seahawks, Quentin Jefferson, Brandon Jackson, and Dwayne Brown all did that same exact thing before the kickoff against the Indianapolis Colts. So we're seeing a variety of ways in which players are trying to make some sort of statement here. And once again, for those who get angry about it, you're just wasting your energy. I mean, this isn't going to change. This is the new reality of the NFL. Players are going to kneel. Players are going to stand. Players are going to raise their fists. So in that perspective, you might as well just ignore it. Let the players do what they want. And you personally, you have your right to stand during the national anthem. So go for it. And that's where I stand on that. I just think people getting so angry about it probably doesn't really help things. So we'll see what happens. It's an ongoing situation. The NFL and NFLPA, by the way, are trying to create some sort of policy here for the national anthem. And we still have not seen that new policy yet. So both sides are still negotiating that. All right. So more headlines to talk about here. Martellus Bennett recently spoke upon the Comparisons and contrast to Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. So Bennett, one of those rare players out there, former players now, to play both for Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Bennett said, quote, I think that no one has more arm talent than Aaron. Aaron can do pretty much anything with the ball. I feel like Tom is really precise, easier to play with. I'd say it was easier to play with Tom than anybody else. So if you're scoring at home here, Rodgers has more arm talent. Brady is easier to play with. Now, according to Bennett, the thing that makes Brady such a great teammate is his ability to communicate with his receivers. And I believe that. I think Tom Brady is one of the premier players, not just from a talent standpoint and production standpoint, but in between the ears. Like, this guy has been around forever. He had that intelligence or has that intelligence like Ray Lewis did at linebacker playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Just that extra edge, if you will, reading a defense, pre-snap, and then during the play. Now, I will say, Martellus Bennett did not take the bait when he asked or was asked who the best quarterback is in between Rodgers and Brady. So I'll let you guys take the bait. Who's the better quarterback? Type away, type R for Aaron Rodgers. Type B for Tom Brady. I see Desmond chiming in on YouTube Live going with B. We'll see what the votes are as we'll keep this bad boy up for a little longer. I will say this. If I am somebody like a general manager or a coach in a fourth quarter situation, two-minute drill, I need one more drive to win Super Bowl 53, who am I putting in at quarterback? Tom Brady. That's what I'm doing. Not Aaron Rodgers. First of all, it's no guarantee that Aaron Rodgers is going to be healthy for the entire regular season. Tom Brady, more of a surefire thing that he'll be good to go. All right, let's talk about Aaron Donald. There's been an increased dialogue between the Rams leadership and Donald as they're trying to figure out this contract situation here. So Sean McVay echoed similar statements made by general manager Les Snead. He said, quote, let's put it this way. There's increased dialogue. We feel positive about the direction that these things are going. The 27-year-old Donald remains out of camp as he seeks that new deal, of course. He's set to make a shade under $7 million in the final year of his rookie deal. Aaron Donald is the best player in the NFL positional value aside. He nearly graded out perfectly, according to Pro Football Focus last season. Now, he missed all of training camp last season and the first game, but still earned the league's Defensive Player of the Year award. So that speaks volumes, for sure. The Rams got to figure this out because I could say this for the Oakland Raiders, too. Cornerstone players deserve to get paid. And when you go out and extend Todd Gurley, cornerstone player, but Brandon Cooks, too, not necessarily a cornerstone player. They just got him via a trade. It's almost disrespectful to Aaron Donald when you're just sitting here twiddling your thumbs waiting for your contract extension, right? So if you're Donald, 
I feel like you're growing more and more frustrated here. And you're sitting saying to yourself, I'm about to get paid a little over $6 million to be the best player in the NFL. And we have seen before where contracts are way too inflated for the talent of that player. Matt Stafford, Derek Carr, Joe Flacco, sadly to say. This wouldn't be the case with Aaron Donald. There is no amount in the world that would be overpaying for Aaron Donald. I mean it. The ability to put him on the interior of that defensive line and not think about a thing is such a luxury if you're Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator, because then you get these one-on-one situations on the outside with your edge rushers. You can have average edge rushers when you have Aaron Donald and Indomitian and Sue on that interior eating up the A-gaps because now you're isolated on the outside. I mean, your right tackle and your left tackle, if you're an opposing offensive line going up against the Rams, they're going to be on islands going up against the edge rushers for L.A. So if you were the Rams, figure this out. And I'll tell you what, if you're Wade Phillips, you're probably like, all right, let's go. Like, let's need, let's figure this out. I want to use Aaron Donald during training camp, right, during the preseason. So we'll see what happens. It's really interesting to see, actually, who is going to get the – First deal. Will it be Donald or Khalil Mack? If I had to pick one, probably going to be Aaron Donald. Sounds more positive on that side rather than the Khalil Mack situation. Clark Bales via YouTube Live. Donald is a beast. No doubt about that. This guy can play. So we'll see if that contract situation gets resolved very soon. Tough situation here. Talked about Darius Geist done for the year. Deion Kane as well, wide receiver from Clemson. So in a conference call with local reporters, Coach Frank Reich revealed that the sixth-round draft pick is out for the season after tearing his ACL in the team's 19-17 win over the Seattle Seahawks. Kane had been a standout in camp for the Colts, a team that simply doesn't have a lot of talent at wide receiver as we stand. It's T.Y. Hilton, it's Chester Rogers, it's Ryan Grant. So this Deion Kane situation here, by the way, from a fantasy football perspective, was getting a lot of buzz as maybe a guy to get in later rounds. Tough to see if you're a Colts fan because you just can't catch a break, right? You get Aaron or Andrew Luck back healthy, and then you lose an electric player like Deion Kane. It's just like you never win. Colts fans, Chargers fans, I feel you. The injuries are brutal right now. All right, let's talk about Dante Fowler. He's been activated off the PUP list. Took his first practice of the summer this past Saturday. He'll serve a one-game suspension, by the way, during the regular season. But obviously, a big season coming up for Fowler because the Jaguars decided to not exercise the fifth-year option on him. So this is a contract year for Dante Fowler, and after that one-game suspension, he's going to have to figure it out and make some plays as a pass rusher. He's more of a pass rushing specialist than anything else for Jacksonville. So for 2019, that's the magical year for Fowler. Either he's getting a big-time contract with Jacksonville or he's going into free agency off a down year and hoping to get employed somewhere, which he would. He's a pass rusher. NFL teams value that, but I'm sure he would like a lucrative deal with the Jags. Speaking of the Jags, cornerback Jalen Ramsey went off on a Jacksonville reporter, and, well, Doug Marone wasn't too thrilled about it. So Ramsey has been suspended by the team for the next week. He won't play in the preseason game. So Ramsey had words both on the practice field and on Twitter with Philip Heilman, a reporter for Jacksonville.com. So Heilman tweeted a video of a fight between Yannick Ngakwe and Dante Fowler. Ironic, because I was just talking about Fowler and his suspension, but I digress. The video ends with Ramsey telling the reporter, quote, y'all stop recording that. And apparently Ramsey found that as some act of war and then just went on Twitter off on the Jacksonville media, tweeting hashtag lame reporters. So Jalen Ramsey probably needs a 10 second time delay. Think about things for 10 seconds before you do it, say it or act on it. He didn't. And now he's suspended for the first week. And 
or the second week of the preseason. And it's, look, Jalen Ramsey. He's a very fiery guy, passionate guy. He has been in some scuffles before, so it's not too surprising. But still, he's going to have to figure it out. He's one of the premier corners in the NFL, top three, top two corners in this league. He needs to cool it off a little bit because eventually suspensions are going to happen if he does run into more trouble. All right, well, Antonio Callaway ran into some trouble recently as well. You guys probably have heard by now he was cited for marijuana possession. He claimed it wasn't his and all this stuff. Well, guess what? His punishment from Hugh Jackson was to play most of the preseason opener for the Cleveland Browns. Jackson said, I was trying to make him play the whole game if we could. I did not want him to come out. Don't really know how this is punishment, to be honest with you. I mean, you're a rookie wide receiver. You're trying to impress the coaching staff. You're trying to be a premier wide receiver in the NFL. And you're in the game. And apparently that's punishment. Now, I guess there were some parts in the game where Callaway had his hands on his helmet and he was out of breath, and I understand that players want to break here and there, but I'm sure he would have preferred that rather than staying out of the game for that entire preseason opener, right? If you're Antonio Callaway. So, I mean, <laughs> you're trying to have a career playing football? Oh, here's your punishment. Play this game. Play football. There you go. That showed you. See, I wonder why Hugh Jackson has won one game the last two years. Punishments like these. So, what do I know? Apparently, I thought Baker Mayfield played on the Jets earlier today. <laughs> oh, God, what a situation. All right, well, Antonio Callaway, he took it with a grain of salt. He took it in the right way, and we'll see what happens going forward with him. By the way, he actually suffered a rib injury yesterday, so maybe <laughs> some after effects from playing an entire preseason game. Who knows? You're watching the Cam Rogers Show presented by AutoList. Are you looking for a new or used car out there and you're tired of browsing a million sites? Go to AutoList.com to browse the largest source of inventory on the web or download its top-rated mobile app for iPhone or Android today. One more NFL rumor to get through and then a full-on Des Bryant segment. Tyrod Taylor wants Des Bryant to play for the Cleveland Browns. So... Recently said, quote, I've said this before, we know what type of talent Dez brings to the football field. He's been a very, very good player in his time throughout this league, and he adds talent to the wide receiver room. So far, it's been the Browns as the only team interested in Dez Bryant. Dez is set to meet with Cleveland later this week on Thursday, and GM John Dorsey has expressed interest in signing the free agent wide receiver as well. So he would join the likes of Josh Gordon, Jarvis Landry, Antonio Callaway, Richard Higgins as well. So, Des Bryant still looking for a team. Now, there was an interesting little note that came out last week where John Dorsey was like, well, yeah, Des isn't answering our calls. And then Des took to Twitter and said, you know what? I am interested in playing for the Cleveland Browns. So, with that, he's on his way to visiting with Cleveland later this week would be interesting, no doubt about it. Certainly for Hard Knocks, by the way, if he joins the Cleveland Browns, that would make for a really good episode. So there you go, the latest NFL rumors here on the Cam Rogers Show.